Hello guys, in this lecture we will talk about types of foundation. There are two types of foundation in construction. The first one is shallow foundations and the second one is deep foundations. Let's talk about the factor affect the choice of a foundation. There are primary factor and secondary factor. The primary factor affect the choice of foundation are Subsurface soil and guard water conditions, structure requirements, including foundation loads, building configurations, and depth. Second factor that may be important include construction method, including access and working space, environmental factor, including noise, traffic, and disposal of earth and water, building codes and regulations, time available for construction, construction risks. So now we are speaking about shallow foundation. Shallow foundation are those that transfer the load to the earth of the base of the column or wall of the substructure. Example of shallow foundations are columns, footing, step footing, mud foundation, combined footing. So shallow foundation transfer the load of the column or the wall at the base of substructure. Shallow foundation types. The first one is column footing, the second one is step footing, third one mat foundation, and the fourth one is combined footing. Now we will talk about when we use every uh, type of shallow foundation. The first type is column. It's simple and most economical. An isolated footing is used to support a single column. We use column footing when columns are not to close the space. Loads on footing are less and the safe bearing capacity of soil is generally high. So it support the load that coming from column and transfer it to the base uh, or the soil beneath the, the footing. And there are three main types of column footing. The first one is named pad footing, the second one is stiff footing and the Third one is sloped footing. Stiff footing. Stiff footing are commonly found in load bearing machinery construction and act as long strip that sub supports the weight of an entire wall. Stiff footing is also provided for raw column, which are so close to space that their separate footing overlap or nearly touch each other. In such a case, it's more economical to provide a step footing than to provide a number of separate footing in one line. This type of step footing uh, supports the load coming from masonry or concrete wall or transfer it to the soil beneath it. Combined footing. When the two columns are so close to each other that their individual footing will overlap. This is the first reason we use combined footing. The second reason is a combined footing is also provided when the property line is so close to one column that a separate footing would be strictly loaded when kept entirely within the property line. By combining it with that of an interior column, the load is evenly distributed. As you can see in this picture, there are this this type of combined footing, another type this one. Raft foundation. We use we use raft foundation when the allowable bearing capacity of soil is low in relation to the weight of building. Column footing may be become large enough that it's more economical to merge them into a single mat that support the entire building. So we use it when the bearing capacity is low and is more economical to merge all the combined or the column footing in one. Mat. So we finished talking about shallow foundations. Now we will talk about deep foundations. Deep foundations penetrate through the upper layer of incompetent soil in order to transfer the load to competent bearing soil or rock deeper within the earth. Example of deep foundation are casing and piles. What is casing? It's similar to a column footing in that it separates the load from a column of a large enough area of soil that the allowable stress in the soil is not exceeded. It differs from a column footing in that it extends through a strata 
of unsatisfactory soil beneath the substructure of building until it reaches a more suitable stratum. So this is the case, it uh, penetrated through the stratum of soil until it reached a suitable stratum and there are two types of casing, first one normal casing and the second one named socketed casing. So how we construct a casing? A casing is constructed by drilling or hard digging a hole, filling the hole out at the bottom as necessary to achieve the required bearing area, and filling the hole with concrete. Large auger drill are used for drilling casing. Hard excavation is used only if soil is too full of boulder for the drill. A socketed casing is drilled into a rock at the bottom rather than built. Its bearing capacity comes not only from its end bearing but from frictional forces between the sides of the casing and the rock as well. We finish talking about the casing, now we will talk about piles. Bile is distinguished from a casing by being forcibly driven into the earth rather than drilled and bored. It may be used where non-cohesive soil, subsurface water condition, or excessive depth of bearing etc. make casing impractical. So this is the uh, piles. And there are two types of wires driven in the soil. The first one is end bearing bile and the second one is a friction bile. So what is the difference between end bearing bile and friction bile? End bearing bile is a bile that is driven until its tip encounters firm resistance from a suitable bearing stratum, such as a rock, thin sand or gravel. Friction bile is driven only into softer material without encountering a firm bearing layer. It may still develop a considerable load carrying capacity through fractional resistance between the sides of the bile and the soil through which it is driven. Bile driven procedure We use bile hammer. Bile hammer is a massive weight lifted by energy of steam, combusted air, combusted hydraulic fluid, or a diesel explosion. So we use this bile hammer to drive the bile into the soil. When in certain type of soil, bile can be driven more efficiently by vibration than by hammer blows alone, using a vibratory hammer mechanism. There are three main types of bile according to their materials. The first one is wood bile, second one is steel, and there are two types of steel bile edge bile and by biles and the third one is brick cast concrete bile as you see in the picture this one is edge biles this one is a steel pipe bile Th this one is brick cast concrete bile and this one is wood bile now let's talk about wood biles and the pro and cons of using them the pro they are economical for lightly loaded foundations the cons they cannot be supplied during driving and are therefore limited to the length of available tree trunks. Approximately the length of them is 65 feet 20 meter. Unless the pressure treated with the wood preservative or completely submerged below the water table, they will decay because the lack of a free oxygen in the water prohibits organic growth. Relatively small hammer must be used in driving timber bile to avoid splitting them. Capacities range of 10 to 55 tons, 9,000 to 50,000 kilograms. Steel bars. The board of using steel bars, they can be brought to the site in any convenient length, welded together as driving progresses to form any necessary length of pile, and cut off with an oxytiline torch when the required depth is reached. The cons of using them is a corrosion problem in some soil. Capacities range of 30 to 225 tons. This is like 27,000 to 204 kilograms. Recast concrete pile. The bro, they are high load capacity, also an absence of corrosion or decay problem, and in most situations, a relative economy of cost. 
The coins are must be handled carefully to avoid bending and cracking before installation. Capacity is range of 45 to 500 tons, 40,000 to 450,000 kilograms. For more information about type of foundation, I encourage you guys to buy this book from Amazon. Foundation Design Principles and Practices, 3rd edition by Donald Coduto and William Kitch. The link in the description below. Also guys, if you enjoyed this video or find it helpful, please uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, th uh, make a comment uh, if you have any question. I will be glad to help you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope I can see you in the next video.